Welcome to my Dragonflight Leveling Guide. Look, today's mission is real simple. It's to let you know everything there is for you to know and to support your own goals in the game. This is not about optimizing the fun out of World of Warcraft. Personally, I'll be smelling the roses, but when the time comes, I too have an army of alts and I'm going to need to get them leveled. And myself, with today's sponsor, us. It's, it, it, it's us. Uh, look, our patrons are a massive part of making this all possible. And here is this month's loot. And there's also a special, so you get even more. It's a hell of a lot and it's all from our game development team. But uh, hey, there's more. We've also got the Lore Walking Podcast, where you will find hours of in-depth lore content. Uh, early access, of course, to upcoming videos, a few of which are, are there now. And uh, it is the best way to help us out and you get cool stuff in return. So patrons, thank you. And if you would like to join up, then you can click that link below. What's new? Well, leveling is essentially an iteration on how Blizzard handled it in Shadowlands. It is fairly quick. The zones are packed with side quests, and a lot of them are actually brilliant. Of course, unlike Shadowlands, dragon riding pretty much gives us flying-ish. It's a very fast traversal speed from day one. More on that later. Now, like in Shadowlands, you will want to finish the main campaign to unlock world quests, because those world quests will get you reputation with the factions at endgame, so it's stuff you'll want to do. Now, the four zones initially must be done in order, Waking Shores, uh, Onaran Plains, Azure Span, Thaldrassus. Once you've completed the campaign then, your alts will be able to do the zones in whatever order they please, and they'll also have world quests activated, so lots of ways to get rep and rewards as you level up. Now, there are a few new considerations, most of which actually do make leveling in Dragonflight far nicer. Alts first. They essentially have the Threads of Fate system active by default if another character in your account has completed the main campaign. Also, all dragon riding progress is account wide, so they'll actually benefit from that too. There also are reputation boosts to consider, that I'll talk about later, and plenty of XP to be earned while crafting, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and talk through the basics. If you're here about launch leveling, then number one thing for you is going to be getting ahead of the pack. That's what we did in Shadowlands, it's what I did in Warlords of Draenor, which actually let me skip almost every launch issue that expansion suffered from. Less competition for mobs and less bottlenecking is great. But that said, this expansion does actually bring a nice change, and that is cross-faction mob tagging, where, uh, okay, yeah, if there's more than five people tagging a mob, it will go gray for you, but gone are the days of, say, the horde stealing your tag, which is quite nice. War mode, of course, it's still here. It can be as much as a 20% XP boost, but obviously at the cost of PvP slowing you down. But I tend to find that most people just use it for the XP boost at the time of an expansion launch, and they tend to avoid fighting each other because they're just there for the XP. So it really can improve your time, especially if you're leveling with a group of friends, which uh, will, of course, make it harder for others to slow you down. Personally, I plan to level in a group of people with war mode turned on. Useful items then. So the checkered flag from the Darkmoon Fair is a 30% mount speed buff, which I bring up because it impacts dragon riding. Uh, you know, that's great. Uh, that little bit of extra speed may just be the difference between you hitting the ground or you making it over the hill, which will save you many, many seconds. As per normal then, the old favorites of the gun shoes and the cracked uh, Radnax control gem are fantastic for getting around, especially if you are going up a hill and therefore cannot benefit much from dragon riding. Gun shoes, of course, are from the auction house, and the Reginax control gems drop from these rares in the Antoran wastes. Uh, you can get around the fact that they're unique, by the way, by just storing them in your mailbox. And uh, thankfully, a few of my characters have some lying around anyway. Beyond that then, just grab a few health potions and all of that, macro that into an oh shit button that also includes casting some defensives, because obviously preventing death will be a massive time saver. The Darkmoon Cannon is also fantastic this time around. You can use it to boost yourself onto a higher ledge, which of course will gain you more altitude, so you'll be able to do a big burst of dragon riding. This truly is fascinating. A wild change. XP for first time crafts. Yep, every time you craft an item for the first time, you'll get a bunch of XP, between 4 and 6% of a level as reported by Kachak originally and megaphoned out to the wide world by Wowhead. 
We don't know if this will be toned down, but he was able to level from 60 to 66 in 30 minutes and 60 to 63.5 in 10 minutes. Now, he did this by getting a whole bunch of materials and then crafting items on tailoring, blacksmithing, and leatherworking. This got him a bunch of useful gear, gear, of course, that he could also sell, some profession gear, and other stuff. Now, he put together a material list and a build order in his video description, and I think uh, I'll certainly be checking him out in the future, given what he's done thus far. Now, I absolutely will be doing this on my alts. But at launch, I do expect the materials to be, of course, limited availability and very expensive. Now, that being said, if you are, say, mining and blacksmithing, then making some blacksmithing crafts as you level would be a nice little bonus to augment what you are doing already, perhaps providing you with enough XP to skip a few side quests. Before I get into the core of leveling, I just want to call out what the best of the best are getting. I always like to follow the speedrunners, I mean, as an example, Desmephisto in a lot of recent times. And this time, I've seen the speed leveler Treefy has clocked in a very impressive three hours and nine minutes long run. Now, you won't be able to do that because he's been refining and practicing his own speed leveling route multiple times over beta. So don't expect similar times. But my point here is, in essence, if a speed leveler can do it in three hours and nine minutes, that bodes pretty well for you if your primary concern is just hitting max level. As an example, if you're able to hit level 63.5 via crafting once materials become cheap, and then you just do the campaign pretty quickly or knock out a bunch of side quests that you haven't done on an alt, then the total time spent leveling would be tiny. That said, hitting max level is not the be all end all. You will have other goals like campaign completion, reputation with factions, and professional Fashions. How to level then? Look, I'm going to take a teach a man to fish approach here. Here's what you do. You start in the Waking Shores and you just follow the campaign. You do not need a questing add-on this time round. The campaign guides you through every zone in a fairly efficient uh, you know, way. Basically, pick up side quests along the way, but if you're just concerned with speed, do not go out of your way to do side quests that are very far away. Do this until you hit the final zone of Thaldrassus. When you're in Thaldrassus, skip all the side quests, just finish the campaign. Once the campaign is done, you'll either be max level or you will be able to hit max level by just going to a nearby quest hub and doing a few quests. In terms of the overall XP amounts, doing only the campaign gets you to around level 77.5, so some side quests will be required. And it really is that simple. Follow those principles and you will have a strong leveling time. There's no sense in overcomplicating things, but there are a few factors to consider. Rare mobs do grant a little chunk of XP, so be sure to go and kill those rares when you see them. Many people would enjoy using an add-on like NPC Scan that will pop up an alert if there's a rare nearby. Then, professions. Do these with intentionality. Gathering nodes can get you some XP, as do, of course, the first time crafts. So, the more the merrier here, I'm generally going to have one gathering and one crafting profession on characters. I just think it's thematically fun to do it that way. And I know that this will actually get me a decent amount of experience as I level. Then, if there's a reputation that you really want to focus on, um, be that for aesthetic preference, trying to get a reward, or perhaps a particular crafting recipe that that reputation sells, then you may want to focus on doing the side quests in the zone of that faction, right? Maybe it would decrease your overall leveling time, but overall, it might mean you can hit your bigger goals a bit more quick. For alts then, do remember that there are two reputation boosts that can be unlocked, and this will be powerful. If your main gets a reputation to renown level 10, then your alts will get a 100% XP boost, well, reputation boost even, uh, up to renown 10. And if your main hits Renown level 20, then your alts will get a 200% rep boost up to Renown 10, and then a 100% rep boost up to Renown level 20. So that would be a fantastic way to kill two birds with one stone. Next, Dragon Riding Glyphs. These are unlocked account wide, and the more you unlock, the more ground you're going to be able to cover on your new dragon. If you're going through the world, and you're going past these anyway, then you may as well pick them up as you go along. Here, by the way, are maps of their locations up on the screen, so you can pause or take a screenshot if you want. So if your questing brings you near one of those things, go pick it up. Whenever you pick up the glyphs, you can acquire these talents. And they do things like this. Uh, more vigor, more abilities, 
Vigor regenerating faster, right? All of that stuff. Uh, this also does mean that your alts will be off to a fantastic start because those glyph unlocks are account wide. So your alt can literally fly off the boat or off the zeppelin that takes you to the isles. Next then, I just want to talk quickly about playstyle because this is so much of where these speed levelers are able to just do incredible work. They play really efficiently. So look, keybind your movement items, use your cooldowns as much as you can, pull as many mobs as you can handle while still having a low risk of death. Remember a handy little thing, you can set your hearthstone to uh, a quest hub that has an inn if it's decently high up and that way you'll always be able to dragon ride from there to where you need to go. You can also consider, perhaps if you're a war mode person, having the Cloak of Cooperation, which is sold by the guild vendor in Stormwind or Orgrimmar, that will teleport you back to that city, which could be useful if you want to toggle war mode as you are leveling. Then also, heirlooms, they'll perhaps come in like a 10.1 or a 10.1.5, but they're not particularly relevant for now. Okay, for alts then, I just want to sum it up. So first of all, when alts are leveling, they can pick up whatever zone they want and they can do world quests. Now, world quests in this game spawn twice per week. They are a bit more style like the Legion one, so they are shorter. The gear rewards do scale with level two. So if you're going to hit level 70 before a world quest expires and that world quest drops gear, you may as well wait until max level so that gear will be scaled to max level. Now these world quests, campaign quests, and side quests, of course, award reputation. If possible, therefore, it would be great to get your main character to renown level 10 or renown level 20 before you focus on leveling up your alt army because if you have the boost unlocked, they will rocket through those reps and rocketing through those reps will actually help them uh, unlock some gear because some gear is unlocked via the renown track. Also, there are some mechanics that come from Renown, like the rock climbing quests and stuff that are like account wide, so it'll be good to have those unlocked too. Add in the crafting bonuses that I talked about earlier, and leveling up your alt army will be pretty damn easy, especially if resource prices come down. Therefore, the most important thing is to not lose your marbles by taking all your alts through the same route, right? I'm just getting bored. There are loads of side quests on the aisles, so actually try to do them all across all your characters. Don't take every alt through the same route, spice it up, see all that's there to be seen. There's actually a lot of heart put into these quests, and uh, I mean hell, you've literally paid for them. Now you can also complete the dragon riding talent tree on day one, on your main, the glyphs are just out there to collect, there's no throttling, there's no time gating, you can just do it. Um, and I mean, in terms of li literally to walk through the talents, you get one extra vigor, a sore speed boost, a surge forward speed boost when it's used at low speeds, faster vigor regen, damage to enemies when you land, even faster vigor regen, five points of vigor, even faster recharge, and then even more vigor, meaning that the uh, just level of speed and endurance your alts will have will be absolutely ridiculous as compared to your main when you initially get dragon riding. So. TLDR, that's that. Ideally focus on your main if you can get your renowns up to level 20 before you do your alts and max out dragon riding. That's basically all you really need to worry about. This time around, there's no mission table or anything like that. It's uh, honestly just a significantly better seeming expansion, to be honest with you. So good shit, right? Okay, I hope you found this useful. Good luck, I guess. Let me know what your leveling times are down below. And uh, I guess rip commodity markets when we all decide it's time to just get a third of the leveling done by buying some crafting materials and uh, I don't know, just getting three and a half levels in 10 minutes, assuming Blizzard doesn't patch that. But so far, they haven't. All right, have a good one.